1.2, go ahead and uh, start copying this down, but 1.2 starts us with some definitions. So the idea is that you need to know what a variable is, okay? Well, variable, literally, you can go to the, like, the meaning of the word. It, it's something that varies. A variable, it varies. It changes. In mathematics, we use a symbol for that. In X, Y, Z, it stands for some number we don't know. It varies. Um, I heard an example of somebody that was, you know, like a, a child who learned algebra for the first time, you know, basic, you know, and they solve for X. They got like X was five. They're like, cool, X is five. I'll memorize that and X will always be five. They didn't understand that X is a variable. It changes. On the different situations, we use that letter, that symbol, for some number we don't know. And depending on the question, it will vary. It will change. That's why we call it a variable. Versus a constant. A constant means something stays the same. I hate my handwriting here. Let me fix that real quick. So like five. Five is always five. If I have five of something, you have five of them. Five is constant. That means that any number, no variable, no x, y, z, any number is constant. Okay? As long as it's just that number by itself. Now, if I have 5x, that changes things. What's an expression? Well, that's when we mix variables and constants. We blend the variables and constants together, and we get an expression. That's through addition, multiplication, all of those order of operations. When we blend them together, we get what's called an expression. So that would be something like x plus 2. That would be something like 2x, because that's 2 times x, right? What's an equation? Well, it's a variable and constants, but at the end, we get this equal sign. This equal sign... That's supposed to be an arrow. <laughs> this equal sign makes it an equation. Equation literally has equa in front of it, right? As in the same root as equal. When we have an expression, we're just expressing some mathematical group. When we have an equation, we are equating it. We are making it equal to something. So instead of just x plus 2, it would be like x plus 2 equals something. Instead of just 2x, it would be 2x equals something. So the minute you set that expression equal to something, that becomes an equation. Here's some examples of expressions. 3m. 3m is an expression. It is a. It has a constant of 3 and a, a variable of m and a mathematical operation. 3m means 3 times m. We're also going to evaluate these when m equals 4. So if I said evaluate 3m when m equals 4, you would know, need to know that that does not mean 34. I will have people tell me that. Well, 3m just means 3 in a number, so it's 3, 4. 34. No, no, no. Because when I have a number next to a letter like that, when I have that, that coefficient next to the, the letter, then that has an implied multiplication there. So 3m means 3 times m. So if I put a 4 in there, it becomes 3 times 4. When they say m equals 4, basically we're sticking a 4 in place of the m. So 3 times 4, 12. What about 3m squared? Well, we know 3m means 3 times m. But what does m squared mean? Well, we had that in the last uh, section. m squared is an exponent, right? with a base of m and an exponent of 2. So it literally means we're multiplying by the base, m, not times 2, times itself twice. That's what 3m squared means. So I could evaluate that when m equals 4, and this would just become 3 times, and everywhere there's an m, we would replace it with a 4. Then we can evaluate that. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 4, I believe, is 48. Please beware, 3m squared does not mean 
these do not mean the same thing. In this situation, and this actually has to do with the order of operation, only the m is being squared. See, this literally means 3 times m squared, 3 times n times m. Exponents occur before multiplication. PEMDAS, right? Write that down again. P E M D A S. The exponent 2 comes before the multiplication three times. That's why it does not mean 3m times 3m. What is the only thing that comes before exponents in order of operations? Well, there's that letter P, right? So if I wanted it to mean 3m times 3m, it's not a big deal. I would just need to put that 3m in parentheses. And then that would basically make that order, that P, would occur first. So now what's being squared is not just the M, not just the 3, but the group. The group is actually the base in this uh, situation. So the group is the base multiplying by itself twice. And then if I evaluate it when M is 4, this would become 3M. Keep in mind means the same thing as 3 times. 3 times. So this would mean the same thing as, now evaluating it 3 times 4. 3 times 4. You should probably know our order of operations here. So we are going to handle the inside of the parentheses first and get 12 times 12 or 144. So this should be, I mean, honestly, I think the, the arithmetic in the last section was probably more complicated. This is more kind of focusing on definitions, writing things out as what they mean, and evaluating by substituting numbers in and doing order of operations. So shouldn't be a difficult section to finish up. What about this mess? So this mess, basically, we have 4x minus 2y over x plus 1. Okie doke. So how do we handle that? Well, 4x means 4 times x. 2y means, two, or minus 2y means minus 2 times y. And x plus 1 just means x plus 1. So we're going to substitute. Everywhere there's an uh, x, this says x equals 6 in this question. So everywhere there's an x, we put a 6. This says that y is 9. So everywhere there is a y, we put a 9. So let's substitute that in. We get 4 times, what's x? Minus 2 times, what's y? All over x plus 1. Now there's a lot going on in this question, right? How do I know what to do first? Well, when I have this right here, I know that this line means division. We do that all the time. If I had something like 8 over 4, you would know that that means 8 divided by 4, and we'd have 2. And we'd be like, okay, yeah. But what we also need to remember is that it groups. Basically, we have two groups. We have a group on the top of the fraction and a group on the bottom of the fraction. And so we have to handle those separately. They're almost like two separate questions. We have to group, handle those groups separately and then do the, that division at the end. So PEMDAS again, we're going to start on the top. I see multiplication. 4 times 6 is 24 minus 2 times 9. I'm not going to skip any steps here. I'm just going to deal with the top for now, and then I'll bring the bottom down. Okay? It is tempting to do 24 minus 2, but that 2 times 9 multiplication trumps the uh, subtraction. It occurs first, right? It is first in the order of operations, so that this becomes 24 minus 2 times 9, and then 24 minus 18 is 6. That's just the top, right? That's not the answer. That's just the top of the fraction. You have to remember now the bottom, 6 plus 1 becomes 7. Now, if I could divide this, I would, but 6 over 7 doesn't simplify, so that's how we would leave that. This is going to take a little bit of time, so I'm going to kind of talk through these, but you're going to need to make sure you know, write them down, pause it as you need to. But here are some symbols we're going to see. We're going to see an addition symbol. 
a plus. Other words we use for that, some, greater than. We talked about that in the last section, but the key here, the key here is that we are not saying is greater than. This is not an inequality. That is makes it an inequality. This doesn't have the is, okay? Or we could say increased by. If I said five increased by two, we would add, right? Here we have a subtraction symbol. We also use the word minus. Or if I said, what's the difference of two things? If you have 10 and I have 12, what's the difference? Well, you would subtract them to find the difference between those numbers. You could also say less than, decreased by. All of those have an implied operation of subtraction. Multiplication, now be careful. Sometimes we use an X for multiplication. It's not like a letter X, it's almost like a little X. I think better is to use the dot or the asterisk, but basically we have multiplication. People will do this, they'll do two like that, and that has a multiplication. That's fine, or two times three. Those mean the same thing, right? So it's not like an X, like a variable, and that's kind of those weird, one of those weird confusing things in mathematics, but people do that. This is multiplication, or timesing something, or the product. All of those are terms you need to know. Onward. We already talked about this, symbol, division, divide by, quotient. But a lot of people don't think of it, but over. Over means division. We do it in implied. This says 8 over 4. This means 8, and this line right there, that over, means division. This is the same thing as 8 divided by 4. 8 over 4 is the same thing as 8 divided by 4. And we saw that 8 over 4 is 2. Be careful because 4 over 8 is not 2, is it? 8 divided by 4, 4 goes into 8 two times. 4 divided by 8, or 4 over 8, is not 2. It actually ends up being what the fraction 1 half. We could simplify it. But the idea is a lot of people do 4 over 8, and they'll go, oh, just divide 8 by 4. No, no. This means 4 divided by 8, not 8 divided by 4. So be careful with that. You also need to be able to check solutions. So they're going to give us equations, and they're going to ask us, and this is how they're going to ask it. I don't really like it, but they'll say uh, P minus 1 equals 3 semicolon 2. And they'll say check the solution. What they're basically saying is P minus 1 equals 3 does P equal 2. That's the question. Okay. So this number at the end is their way of saying, is that the solution? Is P equal to 2? Question, right? Well, check it. If P equal 2, we should be able to take that 2 and put it in place of the P. So this would become 2 minus 1 equals 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, does 1 equal 3? I'm not liking that, right? So if this is not true, if this is false, then that means P is not equal to 2. Or we could say that 2 is not a solution. It doesn't solve this, right? Keep in mind, they're not asking you to solve this at the, this point. We will be doing that. They're just asking you, is this the solution? If you can see it, cool. You're like, well, I knew P was 4, so P is not 2, and I just keep going. Okay, that's fine. But what happens is it gets a little more complicated, like 7P minus 11 equals 5, semicolon 16 over 7. What the heck? What are they asking again, right? Well, they're asking, is P equal to... That's what they're really asking with this last statement, right? This is they're saying, does it equal 16 over 7? I don't know. Off the top of my head, right? You're not just doing that in your head. We need to be able to check it. So just like we did before, I can take that number and I can plug it in for P. And we get 7 times 16 over 7 minus 11 equals 5. So we put that in its place, and then we can analyze it. You have two options of doing this. There's the easy way, which is to see that the 7 multiplying and 7 dividing cancel. And so I'm just left with 16. If 
you're like, I didn't see that. You could take that 7 and multiply it by 16 over 7. And you would get 7 times 16. Uh, what would that be? 70 plus 42. And then you'd have to divide 112 by 7. And you would get 142. What is that? 6. And so you would get 16. I think it's really nice when you can see the sevens cancel. That was a lot of like sad work, but it gets you the same answer. So if you don't see that the sevens cancel, it doesn't mean your mathematics has to shut down. You can still multiply the top straight across and then divide it. But basically multiplying by seven and dividing by seven, they cancel each other out. So I'm left with just the 16. Okay. And then we got 16 minus 11 equals five. Keep evaluating 16 minus 11. Uh, we get five equals five. That is true, which means what? 6p equals 16 over 7. Or we could say that 16 over 7 is a solution. Last but not least, what we need to do is just look at these um, sets here, and they're going to ask you whether questions are ex ex expressions or equations, right? And keep in mind, again, the key feature here is that expression is just basically a set of both variables and constants kind of mixed together with mathematics. Um, but equations has a key part, that equa, I'm looking for any, equal sign. So if I said 2x plus 5y minus 7, did I say equal at any point? No. That makes that group an expression. Now, if I said 2x plus 5y equals 7, that equals gives me that equation. It makes it an equation. What about... Sorry, making a mess here. What about x over x minus 3 equals... 4x. The minute I said equals, that equals makes it a what? Equation. 2x minus 5, or 2x plus 5 equals 7. The minute we said equals, that makes it an equation. And last but not least, not to be undone, 3x minus 1 over 5, or divided by 5, Never at any point did I say equals, so that makes that an expression. If you don't like my arrows, I get it. I could do expression equals makes it an equation equals makes it an equation equals makes it an equation and no equals makes it an expression. Why does this matter? Well, any time I have an equation, I'm going to be able to solve for something. I'm going to be able to solve that for x, for y, for some variable. I'm going to be able to solve. When I have an expression, if I say 2x, which is an expression, I can't solve that. I don't know what x is. There's no equal sign to try to solve it. All I can do is I can evaluate. If I said, well, what if x were 5? Well, then, then we 2 times 5 is 10. What if x were 15? 2 times 15 is 3. I could evaluate an expression with different values of x. But whenever I have an equation, I can solve. So this is really an important feature because we're going to be dealing with expressions. And I have students that will start solving them. They'll go, well, 2x. They go, well, x is 2. Um, no, there's no equal sign. There's no way to know that. Whenever you have an expression, you can only evaluate different values and whenever we have an equation we can actually solve very different so that's it 1.2 is I think is relatively light a lot of uh, definitions but the mathematics should be a little easier than the last section so 
Uh, you shouldn't have any problem knocking these out. Um, be coming in ready for the quiz in two days. And uh, I will keep in mind, if you are all ambitious, get to work on the next sections of notes. I have them on there. Uh, get through them, take them down, and then uh, come prepared in class. You can either take the notes in class um, in two days, or you can come and work on homework, and I'll be here to help you. I, I really think this will be helpful, so let's uh, give it a try. I'll see you guys in two days. Thank you.